Hi, Long Range Hunting. Welcome, unfortunately, to part four of Hammer Bullets. Honestly, I thought I was going to be done at the first one, but this keeps going on. Um, I made my last video saying it's the final video, and I fully planned on it. And then something happened this morning that really irritated me. Now, I test all kinds of stuff, primarily bullets. Um, I do a lot of hunting with different bullets, but people, it's kind of hard to explain what they're seeing as far as on an animal with transfer of shock, the differences in damage, etc. So ballistic gelatin is a great meter. So I started doing these ballistic gel tests to show what they're doing. So we had field results and then we do the gel to show people the temporary wound cavity, the differences in, you know, transfer of energy, permanent wound cavities, etc. Now, a lot of these, I have actual data from the field. So it's just a comparison. There are a few new ones and Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the testing. I'm going to shoot the gel. I'm going to chronograph, do load development, research the bullet a bunch, you know, find out everything I can, good and bad about it as far as reviews. And then I'm going to take that and just look purely at the data, unbiased. There's no connection to any company. And I'm going to provide video evidence of slow motion, regular, um, pictures, etc., of permanent wound of the permanent wound cavity, all the data included. And then I'm going to give a full and accurate breakdown of terminal ballistics and how it is applicable to this. I do it pretty much in every video. It makes it longer. But what it does is give you an in-depth explanation with supporting evidence of what I'm seeing and what drew me to those conclusions. So again, I have no bias. It's just an in and out. I get bullets. Either they're good, they're okay, or they're bad, plain and simple. And I move on. Unfortunately, the response from the fanboys of Hammer, this actually has gone dragged on a little bit longer. And first it was, I did the testing, people were like, oh, it wasn't stable, you didn't have the right twist rate. They didn't know what they were talking about because I never mentioned my twist rate and I do stability testing. And if they knew what a bolt looks like when it impacts without gyroscopic stability, they would know better. Then I got pointed because a guy was arguing to Hammer Bullets YouTube channel saying, oh, they have evidence there. And that was a whole nother ball game of showing very poor performance on games supporting it. So I did another video and then people wanted to argue with that, including getting guys from other countries in Australia with elaborate claims of, you know, documented hundreds of animals that were autopsied and everything else. And then when asked to be provided with that information, never got it at all. I got pictures of six animals from the guy and that's it. He refused to send any more. So I don't know what to tell you, but that spurred on with discussions, guys asking how I do my testing. So I did a video on that, breaking everything down. And then I did a specific one to hammer as far as the full breakdown of my testing, field results, including their videos, and then a test they did as a comparison with the AccuBonds. I called that test shady because it really was. I mean, I look at my camera set up next to that gel. It's right there. Theirs was clear in Timbuktu. This is from the original video. It's such a far distance. You really can't see anything. It was like a 16 second uh, video and it basically one was hammer, one was AccuBond. Uh, I, they posted this in some forms saying, is this, you know, what do you guys think? Look at it. We're beating AccuBond. We're better than a lead core bullet that people use a lot. Now that bothered me for several reasons because one, they're a bullet company. They should know what they're doing. Here's the facts of it. The reason I call that shady is because they didn't really show anything. The camera was clear in Timbuktu. We can't really see the permanent wound cavity that well. 
We can't see if it's multi-directional or like a blade, which if it doesn't do well, what it's going to do is just be like a blade was stuck in there. Now on a good permanent wound cavity where you get transfer, it's not gonna be like a blade. It's going to be like a circle where you're having wounding and going all directions. And so I can't tell if it's singular or multi-directional. I mean, we don't know the length of the wound cavity. And what they say it's designed for is to go in, instantly expand, dumping those pedals. Those pedals go off in their own directions, uh, moving forward, create their own wound cavities, and then that core is what penetrates through. Couldn't see any evidence of that in the gel, so take that for what it is. It expanded and didn't shed or whatever the case is. It's really hard to tell because of the distance. They didn't do slow motion, which is the only way to see that temporary wound cavity, that energy transfer, so there's no way to compare the energy transfer that was given. They harp on how their bullets are so much better, yet they didn't even show the bullets. I mean, they didn't go up and examine it. They didn't show close up. They didn't do any of that stuff. It was just a far away shot, two gel blocks shot. And they're like, oh, we're so spectacular. I understand marketing and I have some patience for it. Marketing is to make your product sound like the best thing ever. But there's a big difference between marketing, which is basically stretching the truth. It's making your fish an extra two pounds. It's making your buck gain three points, you know, a few inches. That's stretching the truth. You know, the shot was so difficult. You know, that's storytelling. That's marketing. Trying to sell a product is great. There's a difference between that and flat out deceit and lying. A perfect example of this is I get sent stuff all the time. One of those was a guy up in Kansas and he was like, hey, you know, I want to get some official training. This guy's offering to do long range training with me. He's former army, etc. He's supposed to be this top guy from what I hear from a couple guys. And I simply said, bud, I don't know who he is. I can't recommend somebody I don't know. Here's a couple names of some guys in your area that are legit guys that will give you exactly what you need. Well, this guy got on and tried to rip me a new one because I wouldn't recommend him. Now, that was just a very simple professional thing. I'm not going to tell somebody something or send somebody to train with somebody if I don't know if they're any good. I don't know their background. I don't know how they train. I'm just simply not going to do it. Because once I say that, that's my word. I'm not going to do that to somebody. I'm not going to set them up for failure. So this guy jumps on there and decides to get in a debate with me. So talking to him, it was very apparent, very quick that he did not have any specialized training. He didn't have training in long range and didn't know basic stuff. And he possibly served in the army. I'm not really sure. Now he had a vague picture up there of a unit that he was supposedly with. And you can't really make out anybody. He just said, hey, that's me. Not really sure if he served or not. I'm not going to dive into that without actually doing a Freedom of Information Act on him and going through those processes. So I can't say definitively if he was or wasn't, but the shady picture that you can't really make out any faces is kind of a red flag. Now, he used a video of his in order to try to prove to me that he was right. And it showed quite the opposite. This is what I call deceit and lies and what really pisses me off now he had a carving just like this now he's got a few friends here he's standing this way and there's a guy here filming him 10 feet away or so is a tree and it's got a big piece of cardboard leaned up with a little mark for them to shoot as far as the bullseye it's not nailed to anything it's not a fixed target. It's nothing. It's just a piece of cardboard leaning up against a small tree. Okay. Does it work? Absolutely. Sure. It'll work. Here's the kicker. Normally when you go to do a video like that and you're going to go shoot, you have people here, they're in their safe spot. You have a camera guy here. Why wouldn't he angle here so he can see the shooter and the target since it's so close? That would be common sense, right? except he didn't. He stood right there videoing this way and not showing that target. Now, if somebody who actually knows what they're doing is going to do is simply shoulder that weapon. They're gonna fire, it's gonna come up, it's gonna come down, and you're just bouncing it. 
So you're finding that rhythm. You're firing, and as soon as it comes back onto that position, fire, and you're just bouncing that. So you're prepping that trigger, breaking it as soon as those sights are on target, and you're rapidly engaging. So what he did is nothing like that. And I've never seen anything like this. It's beyond ridiculous. He didn't even shoulder. He had like this, and he's doing this. Just rapid fire. So again, like I talk about, if you know what you're doing, you're bouncing that. He was firing from here, 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 and everywhere in between. So he's got a good five inches at least of spread of where those bullets are going. And again, those bullets are going out. They're not going to be five inches. Now, that right there was just an instant, instant red flag. Strange, strange way to handle it. Didn't show any real tactics or knowledge. Then I'm listening and I hear something. And it takes him a while to get the camera over there. And then they go and that piece of cardboard still there. And all the rounds are inside of a quarter. Well, considering he was breaking shots here to here, that's physically impossible. But it's also the reason why they didn't show that cardboard is because they leaned it up. He did his shooting and then somebody swapped it out. So he shot up close really nice and then made a big show of it to try to look accomplished and good. Now, I had that instant suspicion just because of that. That was an instant red flag. I mean, long range, again, it's hard to tell. You can watch it through spotting scopes, etc. But when you're that close, that should be easy. Now, it took a little bit, but I actually did find out that my suspicions were correct. And that's what they did. I didn't really need that confirmation because I have common sense. But that's really what happened. And that is shady as hell. Um, that is right there is a red flag to not train with that individual. Another example of one that pissed me off that went way beyond marketing is a guy that makes shooting bags. He's drastically overpriced, but he tried doing a comparison between his competition he was trying to beat and his bag. Now he had a tripod standing up. He took his competition's bag, held it about six inches over that leg and dropped it. It hit, slid down and fell off. Okay. Then he takes his bag sets it right over just a matter of inches over probably three two three inches drops it it hits starts to fall off he grabs it stables it and then goes hey look i got superior performance my bag is way better no you clearly did not even do the same test on the amount of drop and then you got it on there if you take that other bag and do the same thing it's going to do the same thing that is straight up deceit and lies. That is going way beyond marketing. I, if you want to call it, called them out on that um, in that video. And next thing you know, I get on this morning to check emails, Facebook messages, etc. And what do I find? But a new video from Hammer. And guess what it shows? They re-edited that original test that I called them out on from shooting at the gel blocks from Timbuktu. So I went to watch it. Now they have actually zoomed in on that original footage and that brought up a lot more red flags. So they do each one individually and then they do a side-by-side -side comparison. What Something that really bothers me is the fact that they didn't line it up. You have your two platforms here and if they were nice and even, they would look like this, but they have one like this and one like this. Um, it kind of sets the hammer one a little back and it almost gives the illusion that they got more penetration just because it's not directly lined up side by side. But I'm going to let you watch this real quick and then I'm going to dive into all the issues that I see with this. Now you've seen that. Let's look at several things. One, let's break this down. One, they obviously have the capabilities to edit, including zooming in on original footage. They obviously can slow it down. 
Well, if they can slow it down, then why aren't they slowing it down to show that temporary wound cavity, that energy transfer? Hands down, the most important and just alarming part is the gel itself. Now, the hammer bullet testing, if you look at this, both the gel block they're shooting and the catch block are crystal clear. You can see everything. You can see the straps in detail on the other side of it. And then you get to the Acubon, their competition. If you look at those gel blocks, and I couldn't really tell before because it was so far away, they are extremely cloudy. Now this happens when debris and other stuff gets in over time as you're remelting that gel to use it. And that's the point where you're not being able to see anything when you trash that gel. You know, you're just going to get to that point. And the dirtier it is, the more you're going to get that. But that shows a direct, to me, that they are directly trying to prevent you from seeing the results of one and making one look better. The reason I say that is what are the chances that they would have clear on one, the one they're showing, they'd want everything shown. You want to see the wound cavity. Uh, you can see where the bullet stopped. And then their competition is so cloudy, you really can't tell anything, even zoomed in. Now, I, I wouldn't be as suspicious if, you know, one had been clear and the other one cloudy as far as, you know, let's say you have the Acubond and the original gel that they shoot is clear and then the catch block is foggy just because that's what they had. Um, or even, you know, vice versa with the hammer, you know, the one going in or the catch block, one was clear and one wasn't. Then it could just be as simple as, you know, especially on the catch blocks, they're not as important as far as clarity. I could understand that. However, to have one test using gel, that that's at the point where I would be throwing it away. To use that on your competition's bullet throws up a lot of red flags. Another thing, they strapped them down. Re, I don't know if they're trying not to get it dirty or what their logic is, but one thing it does when you strap it down, it limits what it does. As far as, you know, when I shoot it and you see it hit hard, it's sending stuff flying. It's really showing that energy transfer. Um, and those straps kind of do limit that temporary wound cavity too. But again, they didn't do slow motion or they did and just didn't include it. I'm, I'm not sure on that. But either way, the Acubond, honestly, with how dirty it is, you could drop in the dirt and you still couldn't see anything. But again, all of that is irrelevant why they would strap it down for the simple fact they didn't show up close. The original video until this all happened was from far away. They didn't go up close. So why does it matter if it's strapped down or not? Another thing that I don't like is them trying to basically deceive by showing where the wound cavity is. If you look here, they say the wound cavity for the hammer bullet is through the first gel block into the second gel block, and then they show the bullet later. On the Acubond, it just points towards the end of the block. You can kind of see a wound cavity there, and that's where they say the wound cavity is. And so it's basically showing that hammer got so much more penetration. Then it flips over to this, and it shows the bullet stop. Well, I get those are a little offset, so it looks weird, but if you either scoot it forward, which they should have, but if you look at it, just even on the relationship to the box behind, look at that. You're only gaining a couple inches. That's all they got on the other bullet. Hammer got about two inches or so of more penetration than the Acubond, and here's why I call this deceitful. Now, a permanent wound cavity goes from the entrance until that bullet stops. If you catch it in gel, that permanent wound cavity is going to go until the bullet stops. Plain and simple. Now, with it being so foggy on the Acubond, you really can't tell. They're trying to say that permanent wound cavity is just in the first block, when in reality, it goes as far as the bullet. So they're trying to claim that the wound cavity is actually shorter, when in reality, that wound cavity goes clear to the bullet. Now, is it a smaller wound cavity towards the end? Sure. Again, that bullet is losing velocity. It's not dumping the same time, but shock into there. But the permanent wound cavity goes all the way to the projectile. Again, as far as that goes, even with them muddying the waters with the gel and trying to make it to look like you got so much more penetration and a longer wound cavity, 
it's BS. You got about two inches. So you didn't beat it drastically in anything. Now let's get to something I did. I actually recorded this and did it in slow motion to show you the differences between these transfers. Now what I want you to focus on specifically is look at the gel, look at what's transferred, what it's doing. You're gonna see the straps on the hammer bullets and it's really not getting stretched. That gel is stretching a little bit and then it's kind of collapsing and that's when it comes off. But we're not getting any real transfer. The gel block lifts up a little bit, not really much. It doesn't really do anything to the platform that it's sitting on. It's just not a lot of transfer of energy, period. Now let's look at the AccuBond, which, disclaimer, AccuBond, I know they said it's a popular bullet, and that's why they did that. It's a popular bullet, but quite honestly, it's not even a great bullet. There's bullets that are far superior to it. Is it bad? No. Is it good? No. It's kind of that medium as far as bullets go from construction and terminal ballistic side. Now if you watch, not only are you getting a way bigger transfer of energy, even with it being strapped in and kind of limited on that, but you're gonna see it actually stretches the straps. I mean, it literally lifts off the table even being strapped down. You're gonna to see too that that platform that it's on is actually being lifted off the ground from that transfer of energy. So you're getting a massive dump, which is at least double of what hammer bullets achieve. but it literally pulled up and stretched those straps. There's a good transfer of energy for that type of bullet, far superior to the hammer, and then it drops down. Great performance as far as I'm concerned comparing the two. Acubon is the clear winner. I mean, plain and simple. You got two inches roughly of difference in penetration. The hammer barely did anything. It didn't even knock dust off that platform. The Acubon did. But even them zooming in, there's a BS comparison. You've got cloudy on one, and then there's this crystal clear. It's strapped down so you can't see if it goes flying or anything. They didn't do slow motion, which they clearly have the capabilities. The only reason that I can draw that conclusion is because they don't want you to see that transfer of energy. Because if I can do it, they can do it. They tried to say that the wound cavity, the permanent, didn't go as far, the bullet didn't go as far, and tried to make it look like they got the superior performance. Here's a little tip for you. Penetration does not equal performance. You can, neither does weight retention. You can have 100% weight retention and pencil through without any real transfer energy or creating a good permanent wound cavity. You can lose 50% of your weight and cause that to just obliterate everything in there, getting a good temporary wound cavity, that good transfer of energy, that bigger permanent wound cavity, etc. Now these were high velocity, so you have that potential for hydraulic shock, which is going to be stretching that media beyond the elasticity point. It's going to cause a larger permanent wound cavity. So the hammer bullet clearly did not achieve hydraulic shock, which I could have told you the design prevents that. But the AccuBond quite clearly could have. It's just really hard to tell what the wound cavity is. But if that wound cavity is much larger than the projectile, so it's very possible that it achieved hydraulic shock. It definitely should have with the velocity attained and what that temporary wound cavity looks like. But again, it's just, it's really biased. It's really, I don't want to call it staged, but it's just a terrible comparison that really irritates me. It, it plain and simple does. You know, there's, again, marketing is marketing, but I don't like when a company or somebody tries to deceive somebody else. That really pisses me off. Just, if your bullet is so good, let it speak for itself. Put it out there for everybody to see. Put them in two very crystal clear ones on the range. Show on the range what you're using. Fire it into there and give a good, accurate comparison. Slow that footage down and show the temporary wood cavity. Show that energy transfer. Show what that projectile is doing. If you have a good product, you don't have 
to fudge stuff and try to make videos look good in order to try to sell product. If it's good, it's good. It's going to speak for itself. Results are going to be phenomenal. I mean, I just, I'm beyond words at this point. I, I really had to sit down and think about this video because never in my entire history of doing any of this have I ever focused on one bullet so much. And the more it goes on, the more irritated I get with how things are presented, guys trying to, and I'm not even talking about Hammer, other guys trying to lie and deceive and try to make it out to having this great performance, etc. And then they're never able to deliver what they claim. I mean, it's just, it irritates me a lot just because there are good solids out there. Now they're not in league with good lead core, just plain and simple. They can't be due to basic physics, but there are really good solids out there. Lehigh Defense is a very good solid. So in a world of using monolithic solids, I mean, it's just when you have to be deceitful and try to mess with videos in order to make it look good, and it's just poor bullet performance, that irritates me. I mean, plain and simple, it's a piece of copper done on a CNC lathe with a hole in it for the hollow point. That's it. They haven't done anything in order to try to weaken that in order to aid in that expansion because it takes more impact resistance. What other manufacturers actively take steps to give better performance knowing the limitations, they've done none of that. It's a basic bullet with a hole in it and they're trying to claim this great terminal performance. There's been hundreds of examples. Okay, you really wanna compare numbers, lead core bullets, there's millions of kills every year with them. So if you really wanna compare numbers, that's not the way to go, but just, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't see why a company wouldn't take feedback from customers and other people, especially the bad, because that's how you grow. That's how you fix problems is taking, okay, we're seeing this potential issue, let's fix it. I see a lot, I see a lot of deception in different videos of guys like shooting that uh, carving, trying to claim he was great. Uh, that bag test. I see stuff like that that just doesn't sit well with me. And then there's stuff like this that clearly shows the fact that they're not trying to acknowledge they don't have a great product. Instead, they're just trying to double down and try to make it look good. I mean, one of the ones that really irritated me was another video. They shot a mule deer. A guy shot a mule deer it hit right behind the shoulder, facing away. It necked over, changed direction, nicked the spine, and exited the side. So it completely changed directions. They post that video up as an example of how well they work. And you it's spine shot. You can see it laying there with its head moving around afterwards, which is what you see with a spine shot. But they ended up turning off the comments so nobody could talk about it. Well, again, that's another thing that sets off a red flag for me. So... I really hope this is the last video. I get tired of dealing with this. I've got other bullets to test. Um, you know, it's just these, I'll call them fanboys, keep going on and on and on and on. And I finally just shut that down. You know, a couple of guys are trying to argue and they lost on that, plain and simple. But I never planned on doing another video and it just keeps going. But the only reason I am is because of this. I mean, seeing this in the morning... And that clear lack of a equal test and the fact that in response, they simply zoomed in, which gave me more knowledge as far as I can see now that the gel blocks are not equal in clarity and see a bunch of other stuff and I'm able to actually slow it down and really get a good look at it. But I mean, why not redo the test? They obviously have the bullets. They obviously have the facility to do it. So I'd hope they'd be more honest. Honestly, I really hope that they change and step up their game because there's a lot of people that are forced to use monolithic solids. You know, hopefully that they can start taking criticism and design a bolt that actually performs better and does fair and accurate testing in order to show comparisons because this wasn't it. As always, everybody, be safe out there. Happy hunting.
that hard, people. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notification bell so you won't miss out on any future video. And happy hunting.